In this series, we're going to be making a number of smaller videos focusing on the inside of keeps of various different medieval castles found inside England and the United Kingdom. Today, we're going to focus on Dover Castle, one of England's most important and famous. Welcome to Inside the Keep, Dover Castle. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Dover Castle was founded in the 11th century, however it didn't take its recognisable shape that it possesses today until the reign of Henry II in the 12th century. Henry would begin to invest huge amounts of money, investing into a massive castle, and he recognised the strategic importance of the fortification overlooking the English Channel. It's regarded as the key to England, and its keep is one of the most recognisable and fascinating that we've ever visited, for it is one of the best maintained and complete medieval keeps, yet saw a huge amount of action, including even during the Second World War. Dover's Keep, or the Great Tower as it's known, was accessed through one of two gatehouses. One of these is the King's Gatehouse, which was much more prestigious and exclusive, but both of these entrances did lead into the inner bailey of the castle. This is the most security conscious part of the castle, and access to the Great Tower would have been extremely limited. The keep measures almost 30 metres by 30 metres, and the walls are up to 6.4 metres thick in places, showing how it was intended to be an impenetrable stronghold. When it was built, it was faced in grey Kentish ragstone, with broad decorative bands of Carn stone from Normandy, which was bought because of a shortage of building stone in the southeast of England. Over the time it has stood, the keep's exterior has been refaced, and also many of the windows have been recut. The Great Tower is four storeys high, although it has only ever had three storeys of interior. When entering Dover Castle's keep today, the first floor you enter is actually the ground floor, and you enter through the basement stores or the kitchen. This room contains a large bread oven, and the feature is remarkably original to the building. The Great Tower originally had two entrances, and guests would usually not enter by the ground floor, as it was typically used for storage. Today it is presented as if Henry II was here on a royal visit, and it is set up like a royal kitchen. There is no evidence except the bread oven that suggests this space was used as a kitchen. Using this we can assume that food preparation took place in a different building separate to the keep, and this was usually done to help contain the spread of a fire, should one break out. This way the keep wouldn't be damaged. Kitchens would usually be found within the outer bailey or the inner bailey, depending on the size of these. Inside the keep are also a number of storerooms or rooms that could have been used for a number of different purposes. Many of these are accessed through the two spiral staircases found in the keep, and some of these rooms could have simply just been used to store goods. However, a number of these could have also been garter robes or used as toilets. These toilets would have given guests a degree of privacy and waste would have been sent directly out of the castle. One of these rooms could also have been a guard room for guards to relax and take a break in, after doing patrols of the keep and the castle's grounds. Much of the first floor was used as a suite of accommodation for another member of the royal family, of the king, or for another high profile guest. This part of the castle would have been very exclusive, and security was tight. The lower hall today is set up as if it was a dining room, and this would have been a room used for banqueting and entertainment. Much pomp and ceremony would take place in this room, with the king entertaining his esteemed guests. Usually a top table was laid out at the top of this room, with the king facing all his guests when he was eating, showing him off as the most important person in the room. Music would be playing throughout and there would be much entertainment supplied. If the king's court was travelling around with him, this room would be very busy. Leading off this room was a bedchamber for the esteemed guests of the king, and these have also been decorated as if the king was visiting, with Henry's colour and decor found all around the room. The room was heated by a central fireplace, and tapestries on the wall would have helped to keep it warm. Leading off these rooms are a number of wardrobes, large cupboard rooms that contain clothes, and usually the king would get dressed in this area. Even these rooms were heated by a fireplace, and this floor was also serviced by a toilet, found off one of the large rooms. Upon the second floor are two rooms that would have been certainly used by the king. The first room you enter may have been originally intended as the king's hall. When the court was in residence, it would have been used for a number of different purposes, for ceremony and dining, as a place for meeting and assembly, and also members of the court could have slept here. Its lower entrance leads to a garderobe or public toilet. The hall seems to have been carefully planned, as a place to house big ceremonies, such as the entrance staircase descending into the room, so important people could be seen. 
Also, the room was overlooked by a balcony, where people could view the festivities from height. The second large room on this floor was probably intended as the king's chamber. It's similar in size to the hall, and it was where in the 12th and 13th centuries, government business was conducted and carried out. In a great medieval household, this room was much more restricted than access to the hall was. It would have been the king's private apartment, and he would have shared this space with his closest advisors, his closest servants and officials too. Guards would probably have slept in a room nearby. This room would have been rather warm and hugely decorated with expensive decor and ornaments. In the 15th century, the windows were widened to allow more light in and to make the room brighter. As mentioned earlier, above the second floor is a large gallery that acts as a viewing platform for the majority of the second floor. This is a rather ornate feature that would have allowed people to spectate the events going on below. This gallery also connects the two staircases found in the corners of the tower. On the roof of Dover Castle offers some spectacular views of the English Channel and the surrounding southern coast. You can also see some incredible parts of the castle from here, such as the Roman lighthouse and the church. Parts of the original battlements were taken down to allow a clear field of fire when cannons were placed upon here to guard the English Channel from the French. The present battlements that you see today were created in the 1930s and they do not follow the original pattern of the castle. I hope you've enjoyed our brief look inside the keep at Dover Castle. If you do want to find out more about the castle, or have a more detailed look around the different parts of this castle, such as the fantastic Roman lighthouse, the medieval tunnels, and the remarkable World War II defences, check out our other video on Dover Castle where we give you a detailed tour. Once again, thank you for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Once again, thanks for watching.